the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello, and welcome to They Think It's All Over. Now, after a full inquiry into last week's programme, we can confirm that yet again, Gary Lineker's team mm -hmm. were cheating. So we have decided to strip him of last week's show and award it to David Gower's team. <laughs> now, it's not the sort of behaviour we expect, Gary, from someone who appears in a kid's TV show. Gary here. The best way to win a free kick on the edge of the box is to be a great big cheat, like I am. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is a sports presenter who in 1995 hosted a 20-hour football show. But then, eventually, Man United got the equaliser. <laughs> Gabby Yorick. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is a comedian and Crystal Palace fan who queues up for the Selhurst Park turnstiles every week. Her ambition is to get through them and actually see a game. <laughs> Joe Brown. We start the ball rolling with our excuses round. Now, David, Jonathan and Gabby, it's the boy racer himself for you, Jensen Button, seen here on the test drive that convinced Williams to sign him. Now, when he arrived in Melbourne for his Formula One debut, all the other drivers had a drive around the circuit to familiarise themselves with it. But Jensen was driven round the Grand Prix course in a taxi. David's team, why? He, um, you know, he's never going to do, I don't think, as well as people hope. Because whenever they got the pit stop, the guys come out and they can change the tyres and they refit everything in about eight seconds. But they have to wait for him to come back because he always has to have a wee and get a bag of crisps. <laughs> and then before he gets in the car, his mum spits on the hanky and wipes his visor to make sure he's tucked in. And makes him promise to be home before nine. You mentioned crisps then, Gary got excited, didn't you, Gary? <laughs> Is that, do you actually get erect when people talk about crisps? No. Is it, <laughs> just a rumour. Is that be. erect? <laughs> Gary's crisp advert came number nine in the top 100 of adverts. Wow, in... how about that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Can I just say very briefly what I particularly liked was the director saying how intelligent you were because you instinctively knew how to hold the crisp properly. <laughs> <laughs> you see, all, that, all those years at Spurs weren't wasted. <laughs> He take the piss out of Gary a lot, but he can hold a crisp. <laughs> <laughs> he was comparing him to the chimps from the PG Tips advert. <laughs> you know, I think Jonathan was Oh, David's going to talk. <laughs> 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 it's going to be funny now. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. <laughs> I thought you were right. No, you were right. The way, the way it's a... <laughs> <laughs> He's the master. He is the master. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> no, it's, it's a longer line. It's a Frank Williams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> what was the set oh, oh, no, We no. all love you. Come on. <laughs> no, it's in the intercom on the way around the race. Is Frank Williams having problem with him saying, "Are we nearly there yet?" You know, <laughs> he's whinging about it. I want to drive the red car. Why does Michael Schumacher always get the red car? <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's a touching vote of sympathy for one. <laughs> You've heard claps like that before, surely. You trudge back to the pavilion. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it nice to see a working class boy doing well in Formula One? Jensen Button. How posh a name is that? <laughs> Jensen Button. It's like, it's like one of your kids would be called Jensen Button. It's like, where are they find from? The Mr. Men. Mr. Hold, Button from the Mr. Men driving in Formula One. Just, just run us through. What are you, I've had enough what, of it. What are your children called? Just talk us through your three. Children. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with calling your kids Tipsy, Dipsy and Lala. <laughs> Do you think um, Jensen's missing out on the fun to be had, on the richer aspects of Formula 1 racing due to his, his youth? Because he gets to the end of the race and, you know, he finishes, he looks over there and there's Eddie Irving surrounded by the world's top models. And what would he say? Go, girls, ugh! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, I mean, this a poll recently, um, top, well, a lot of people did it, but he did it, top ten women of, of all time or something, and his own girlfriend only came third. So he only put her in third place? Yeah. God, if my girlfriend comes second, she's bloody happy. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm not married. <laughs> Nick, I've heard if your girlfriend comes at all, she counts herself. <laughs> she will! <laughs> 
Normally, you're in the taxi home by the time she's finishing off. Do you want to... How'd you get on? <laughs> I'll call you back. I'm sitting on the washing machine. <laughs> It was something to do with insurance. I think either he, um, he must have his street di driving licence. I don't think they could get insurance for him. Three points. Well done. Very good. And here is Jensen Button himself to explain. I can drive a Formula One car, but I can't rent a car due to my age, being only 20. Uh, so uh, we got picked up from the airport by a taxi who asked if we would like to go around the, the Melbourne circuit. So we did. We got completely lost and uh, didn't learn anything except I lost a lot of sleep. So Jensen is old <laughs> enough to drive in a Grand Prix but too young to rent a car. He's the youngest driver in Formula One. In fact, he's so young he was at school with Bernie Eccleston's wife. <laughs> Beatle George Harrison is a big motor racing fan, but embarrassingly, Jensen didn't recognise him when they met after the Melbourne race. You'd have thought the kitchen devil sticking out of his chest would have been a giveaway. <laughs> Joe, Rory and Mr Cheaty, it's Paolo Di Canio and that goal against Wimbledon. <laughs> Trevor Sinclair with a look up and he's looking for Di Canio. Oh, an amazing goal by the Italian. What a strike. Now, Paolo Di Canio was recently fined £5,000 for making this gesture during West Ham's draw with Aston Villa in January. But according to his manager, Harry Redknapp, the gesture was entirely innocent. So what, Gary Sneem, did it mean? I think he's giving a piggyback ride to an invisible nun. <laughs> <laughs> Something no, yeah. It's an Italian thing. I didn't actually get into that game because I couldn't get through the turns. <laughs> Are they, are they different from... Uh, <laughs> are these turnstiles different from the normal turnstiles? Yeah, you have to pay well, extra. <laughs> you have to pay extra, but they still wouldn't queue. Um, <laughs> is he doing an impression of Jeremy Beadle? the Jeremy Beadle fan club here. <laughs> I think Rory looks a bit like Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> a little bit. What you is think it? Gary looks like a twat from Leicester? <laughs> I don't think you've ever seen a twat, have you, Rory? <laughs> um... Not since I left your dressing room 25 minutes ago. <laughs> it's going to be a long night again. <laughs> Was it just a completely innocent gesture? He was not actually sticking his finger up at someone, he was just scratching his back or his arse or something. Right, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah? <laughs> yes, the answer is that Di Canio was scratching his back, at least that was a theory put forward by Harry Redknapp. As well as playing for West Ham, Di Canio owns a clothes shop which supplies Luca Vialli's wardrobe. Gianfranco Zola gets his clothes from Baby Gap. <laughs> A recent survey claimed that West Ham supporters are the most stylish in the land. Their toe caps are polished and all their tattoos are spelt correctly. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. Oh. We move things along now with our sporting bluff round where the sides try to work out who on the other team is speaking the truth and who speaks with forked tongue? Joe, Rory and Cheat Boy, it's boxing for you. In the week that Lennox Lewis cemented his reputation as the world's number one boxer, we look at how Mike Tyson cemented his reputation as the world's number one shopper. David's team, what have you got to say? Gabby. Um, while shopping in London, Mike Tyson bought a traditional red telephone box. While shopping in London, Mike Tyson bought a Formula One car. While shopping in London, Mike Tyson bought a Charlie Chaplin hat. So, did Tyson buy a red phone box, a Formula One car, or a Charlie Chaplin hat? Gary's team. Wasn't me who cheated last week. If you lie, your ears will grow. You were cheat, cheat, cheat. <laughs> <laughs> did he buy a phone box because um, he needed a venue to gather together um, all the women who have some respect left for the jolly old rapists? <laughs> I would get in that phone box if I could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is 
honestly, I can't because I can't get through any enclosed spaces because I'm so fat. I'm right. fat as well. <laughs> Obviously not as fat as you. <laughs> Well, on, Gary thinks he's in the body zone in Millennium Dome. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson did, while he was here, it's not mentioned on your list, but he did buy a watch for, well, a watch, he spent £150,000 on a watch. That's, That's true, it is true. Yeah, watch is only worth £4.99, all those 20p's you put in that machine. <laughs> 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 Perhaps he had a date that night and had a quick getaway. <laughs> There's more laughter from the other team. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, can I just give you a clue? G Gabby just said. David's trying to pull over it. Look at old Gabby. Well, I think he's in. I think well, the old you... silver fox has done it again. <laughs> Gabby was saying that she thought the way they were going, the question might come across to our side. I said, well, actually, we know the answer anyway. It's not quite. <laughs> It's like Chris, it's like Chris Tarrant thinking I'm going to win a million. <laughs> <laughs> this lot gets it wrong, can't they? <laughs> oh, what you, phone box? I don't know, phone box. So you think that know. Gabby was telling the truth, let's see if you're right. <laughs> so Jonathan Speck, the Chief Mike Tyson, was going to spend 650 grand on a McLaren car, but changed his mind at the last minute and demanded a hat like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Among the other things Tyson took home with him were an Aston Martin, a diamond ring, a sculpture of himself and a hundred Versace suits. When he got home, his wife said, what about the milk? <laughs> <laughs> when he was in London, Mike Tyson went to Madame Tussauds where he bizarrely gave a bear hug to the wax statue of Saddam Hussein, which toppled to the ground when he let go. At least it stayed on its feet longer than Julius Francis. <laughs> David Steam, it's the finest buck tooth injury <coughs> rattle striker in the world for you, Ronaldo, <coughs> scoring here for Inter against Schalke 04. Lovely shield and turn by Ronaldo. This is Djokiev, and Ronaldo takes over and he's in the clear. Lovely goal by Ronaldo. Now, Ronaldo recently became a father for the first time, and imaginatively, he named his son Ronald Ronaldo. <laughs> But who was he named after? Gary's team. Ronaldo named his son after Big Ron Atkinson. <laughs> Gary? Go no further, that's enough for us. <laughs> that could happen. <laughs> Very likely. Ronaldo named his son after Ronald McDonald. Ronaldo named his son after Ronald Biggs. So, did Ronaldo name his son? <laughs> After Ron Atkinson, Ronald McDonald, or mm. Ronnie Biggs, David Steen. You know, it doesn't really matter because whichever one he named him after, he is a complete and utter prick, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Stop touching yourself up, little guy. <laughs> Children, watch you on your dodgy piss bed. But there you are, rubbing your nipples like some foul, lecherous old pervert. Is that someone else's hands coming underneath your arm? Gary's you've got a gay friend behind you. Gary's the sort of person who at teenage parties used to do this business, isn't he? <laughs> Teenage parties, I saw him doing it in the green room last week. <laughs> one thing that does strike me as being quite sad is so many Brazilians, we think of Ronaldo, are known only by the one name. And that's a terrible thing, and we take for granted the fact that we have two names. <laughs> and you know, there may well be some people watching who even have three names. <laughs> and he's Van Alton, with Van Nisselroy. Some people, Jean Claude Van Damme, have four names. <laughs> So I'm asking you if you have a spare name. Send it and we'll send it to Brazil. And we'll give some Brazilian child a chance of a better future. Together, you and I, we can give those kids a surname. <laughs> I will defer to you, our silver-haired and slightly balding captain, I think. I was looking at Gary then, sorry. <laughs> Bit. Come on, answer. Biggs. So, you thought it was Rory. Let's see if you're correct. <laughs> yes. Ronaldo's son was indeed named after Ronald McDonald because apparently both of his parents like to eat at McDonald's a lot. <laughs> Let's have some sense here for a minute. If you were a McDonald's fan, you'd name your kid after Hamburglar, who's a much cooler <laughs> character. <laughs> Now, when the baby was born, the nurses said he was just like his dad, and to prove it, the kid gnawed through its own umbilical cord. 
And so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. Come on, come on. It's time now for our What's Going On round. David's team, it's Stephen Graff's brand new heavy, Andre Agassi, for you. Oh. Well, that's a pretty unusual interruption. Thank you for taking colour. Everyone amused, including Steffi Graff. But not, it would appear, Pete Sampras. And Agassi tidies things up. So, David's team, what was that all about? Yeah, I think I know. What's happened is Steffi, <laughs> Steffi has sneezed. <laughs> and Andre has boiled her ladylike tissue to mop up the... <laughs> That wasn't a tissue, that was um, Tim Herman's white flag, I think. <laughs> was uh, Anna Kornikova on next and Rory just couldn't wait? <laughs> Actually, it was Betty Stover. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. But you were telling me that a lesbian um, approached you recently with view to a date. Tell the ladies and gentlemen what happened oh, so yes, they can decide for themselves <laughs> whether you were the innocent victim or whether you were giving the old lesbo the eye. <laughs> friends thought that she was going for my boyfriend but she said I'm not actually it's her that I want she was after you yeah and will you please where was if it? not for my sake for the sake of Jensen Button watching home please tell us that for a second you considered the possibility <laughs> <laughs> just give young Jensen something to grow into she wasn't really my type she wasn't no if she had been your type then go on <laughs> I tell you he's after oh, you filthy you are <laughs> he's sniffing around you like a butcher's dog <laughs> Is it a bird, just a bird or a parrot doing its whoopsie on I need to know which sort of bird. Hummingbird, tiny hummingbird, carrying a very heavy load after a long hibernating journey. <laughs> carrying as much poo as its own body weight. <laughs> Finally shedding its load on Agassiz's bald spot and soaring off into the stratosphere. Like Icarus going no too close to the sun before singeing his tiny hummingbird wings and landing as a delicacy before an Indian potentate. <laughs> 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 You know, sir, I am somewhat running on empty tonight. <laughs> Seagull. Correct, well done! Yay! Gabby, pull me out of the bag. <laughs> yes, the answer is that the game had been interrupted by a defecating oh, seagull. The clip you saw was from the epic Australian semi in which Agassi defeated Pete Sampras. Agassi remained calm between games, sipping his barley water, but Sampras seemed agitated, slurping PG tips and trying to move a piano. <laughs> Andre Agassi admits that for a while he became obsessed with Dunkin' Donuts and Chicken McNuggets, which was a terrible worry to their father, Ronaldo. <laughs> Joe, Rory and Charlie Cheat, it's uh, football, football for you. There's a few things like the lockdown's going, but obviously we don't want the cameras there while we're talking and discussing, so if we can ask the cameras to leave, please. So, Gary's team, what was going on there? Something to do with women managing a football team, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Are you sure they were women? Can we see that again? <laughs> they're not women. That's yes, Gary, they're women. They're <laughs> That's Kevin Keegan and Terry McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're Rory's sisters. <laughs> two women managing a football The first time two women have managed a football team since Glenn Hoddle and Eileen Drury. <laughs> <laughs> There were two tea ladies. Oh, there were two tea ladies, ladies yeah. Given charge of the side. Yeah. Because they had a whinge about that. Mm -hmm. Said they could do it better. I'll give you three points for that, yeah. We had to name the seagull. <laughs> no, you had to name yeah. the bird. I didn't tell you to name the seagull. <laughs> now, that would have been unfair, wouldn't it? <laughs> that was a Manchester Cup tie featuring Stella Quinn and Julia Roberts, the tea ladies with non-league Droylsden. The normal manager refused to have anything to do with the Manchester Cup after he'd got the club disqualified the previous season by fielding an ineligible player. So the tea ladies took over for the match against Abby Hay. Man United's tea lady has just been awarded a medal for 42 years service, during which time she says she's seen a lot of changes. Exotic foreign biscuits like Gary Baldi's and Bourbon Creams are starting to push out the journeyman English biscuits. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. It's time.
time once more for our regulars to grapple with the stars by playing Field of Sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're first this week. Do you mind doing this by yourself? May I say, Gabby, that I also find you very attractive in the most superficial of ways. <laughs> <laughs> OK, blindfolds on. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? You can start your mauling now. <laughs> what are you doing? You've been all hit up by Gabby, haven't you? Get off me. <laughs> Things have got so desperate, Linick has shot the mystery guest. Get <laughs> down here. Hey! Oh, Nick, he's not standing in that <laughs> Is it Rude Van Nisselroy? <laughs> I think he must be Jensen Buttons, he's way past his bedtime, look. <laughs> his mum's got Sorry. gloves on to stop him tampering with himself. <laughs> stay, to, stay to bed and leave those mags alone, you dirty little bugger. He's <laughs> got a head up here somewhere, isn't he? Where is this? Is that another...? <laughs> What's that? Is it Pam Shriver? <laughs> It's got to be a box, wasn't it? It's a boxer. Brilliant. Is it? Oh, hang on. Is it, is it the guy who, um, <laughs> Lennox Lewis just knocked out that guy in round two? Is it Mike something, the guy who, uh, Lennox Lewis just yeah, knocked out? Yeah, right, he's going to fly is over it? from America. <laughs> is it the bloke mentioned earlier in the programme? That's not obvious. Could be a clue, couldn't it? Oh, what, the guy who, um, Tyson uh, knocked Tyson out? Tyson, sort of... Ju uh, Julius Francis? Correct for the reply. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to Julius, by the way, for being such a good sport, and let's hope he gets his British heavyweight title back. <laughs> Rory and <laughs> Sir Cheetah Lots, could you move to your places, please? I'm not playing. Come on. Come on. Do you know I'm missing out there? Oh! <laughs> Did you? <laughs> well, Gabby, I too find you a very attractive. <laughs> superficial way. I used to watch you do gymnastics, you know. No, you didn't. I not. did, I did. You sprained your wrist, didn't you? Oh, no, it was me. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, blindfolds on. <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? Your 90 seconds start now. Oh. Rory, is that, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, what's this? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's a cake. <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of that famous sporting cake? <laughs> oh, that's nice, actually. <laughs> oh, look, Team Cake, you go. <laughs> A tray of goodies. Is oh. it? <laughs> Hello. Oh. Oh. Right. I know this. Right. Is. It's right. Terry McDermott, Kevin Keegan, no. isn't it? <laughs> it's Stella Quinn and Julia Roberts. Right. Well. At the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine. <laughs> we head for the finishing post by playing the name game. Now the leaders go first, which means that usually the leaders would go first, obviously, but we hate the alphabet. So instead, <laughs> Gary's team are going to start. Pass it on to Rory, please. Oh, come on. Nine seconds. Starting. Now. Right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> seen that before. <laughs> Whistleblower, he's grasped up his mate in the England team. Chris uh, Lewis. Yeah, well done. Um, he's the just recently sacked, very topical, this uh, Norwegian manager of Wimbledon. Thank Olsen. Very good. <laughs> Andrew McLarty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First name is a short word that we call Jonathan. Twat. <laughs> Dickhead. Short John. Of Dick. Dick. Yeah, that Dick. Very good. Second. Uh, first syllable <laughs> of the second name. God, it, is the part of a part of a body. Think of Gabby. Think what you said about Gabby earlier on. Nice. You love to eat your dinner off her ass. Oh. Very close. <laughs> but, um, but. Very close. But yeah. <laughs> second syllable. <laughs> Is the, uh, <laughs> it's the American for swearing. You know when they swear in America, they say, "Damn." Damn. Yeah, but what's it called? Bollocks. It's not cursing. It's Cuss. Uh, cussing. Dick. Cuss. Dick. Dick cuss ass. Dick. Cuss. Dick butt cuss. Dick butt cuss. <laughs> Andrew McLeod. Um, since I've made it quite hard this week. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Scored three goals in the 1966 World Cup. Jeff Hurst. Jeff Hurst, that's close enough for me. <laughs> Not for me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so four will win it for you. <laughs> I don't think you'll do it, personally. <laughs> Your 90 seconds starts now. Uh, tennis player, she goes out with Andre Agassi, got Debbie a big Graf. nose, Debbie OK. Graf, yeah. Second one, uh, first, second name would be how you would say the number before two. One. One. Yep, OK, and the first name, very one. common. Yeah, Warren, one. you got it. One. Uh, and the first name, very common Australian name, very common name. Right? Bruce. Now, if you were to know Fairground Shane. or something. Yeah, there you go. Shane. OK, uh, Shane. 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 this one, this one, uh, Bradford City assistant manager, your father. Mm. Come on! Terry. <laughs> I'm not asked my mum yet. All right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, okay. This you one. Heard it here first. This, <laughs> this was a Russian gymnast. We felt up last year, but it was on the shows. It was all oh, yeah. okay. Olga Korba. Olga Korba. There you go. All right. Oh man, this one. Second name. I hosted the comedy awards one year, and Julian Clary came out and made a joke about people who do this kind of thing. Fisty. Second name. Uh, if you're Italian and you say it is not cold though, but it is very. Otto. 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 Alright, uh, second name, um, <laughs> Doc, alright. Oh. Did we do it? Only oh, that. Oh. That was a hard one. So, Gary's team have 12 points, but this week's winners are David's team with 14. Our thanks to David, Jonathan and Gabby, Joe, Rory and Cheaty Cheaty Bang Bang. <laughs> <laughs>